Elon Musk recently claimed that Starship is ready for Flight 2 to ensure the upcoming flight is a success. SpaceX revealed a new Stage 0 for the Starship orbital launch that's much better than you think. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. As you know, Starship's first launch attempt in April ended up with a bang not only destroying the whole rocket in the sky, but also damaging Stage Zero on the ground. According to reports, the OLM was the most severely affected component as the power from the Starship's monster Raptor engine punctured the concrete beneath the orbital launch pad, leaving a sinkhole there. In addition, other structures were also damaged, including the tank farm. With the naked eye, it could be seen that the two tanks, including a water tank and an empty tank on the opposite side of the launch pad, were significantly deformed, but fortunately, there was no leak and there was no dangerous propellant inside. What's more worrying is the LOX tank on the far right, which appeared to have several small dents that might cause a leak. Overall, the explosion from the launch left a 385-acre debris field that flung concrete chunks as far as 2,680 feet from the launch pad and sparked a 3.5-acre fire. So, to prepare for the next launch, SpaceX immediately conducted the repairing and upgrading the Stage Zero. The company started with repairs to the OLM, which included reinforcing the foundation to make room for the massive steel pancake and a water deluge system that would be added later. In the underground structure, we can see the combination of reinforcement, a network of steel bars tightly connected to the foundation. This reinforcement provides structural integrity, ensuring that the launch pad can withstand the tremendous forces unleashed during rocket liftoff. Another interesting thing is that SpaceX continues to use Frondag concrete to reinforce the foundation below the OLM with a total of 5,411 tons of concrete consumed. This kind of concrete had been used under the launch mount before Starship's first test. In that test, it could not withstand the vehicle's super powerful thrust, causing a fatal hole in the OLM, but we cannot blame it for the damage there. To be honest, Although it is high-quality specialized concrete for the launch site, it would be better to use it on surfaces that are not directly exposed to the Raptor's propulsion. The SpaceX team was probably not aware of this. In addition, the Mega Steel Pancake for the Flame Diverter system was then not ready in time, so it remained a naked concrete layer beneath the pad during Starship's first test. Until the accident happened, Elon realized his mistake and said we learned a lot from the first flight, so this time, the public got to see a super cool steel pancake placed on concrete, ensuring that it would never break again. This giant steel plate plays an important role in the flame deflector system. It is a very thick, perforated steel plate that sits directly underneath the rocket and multiple huge water jets that continually cool it with water, even as it's bombarded with flames from the rocket engine. This system uses water resources that are stored in two groups of horizontal tanks located in the tank farm. According to CESI Starbase calculations, for a group of four short tanks, each tank has a volume of about 31,000 gallons, so the total would be about 123,000 gallons. The larger water tank group is available with two tanks holding 82,000 gallons each, nearly twice the volume of the smaller water tanks. Once the third is installed, the total capacity will go up to 246,000 gallons. In summary, when totaling the seven tanks, the number would be nearly 370,000 gallons, which is about 82% of the capacity of the water tower used on NASA's SLS flushing system, containing 450,000 gallons. Although the SLS's thrust is half that of the Starship, it consumes more water per launch. What do you think about this? Don't hesitate to let me know your opinion in the comments section below. To facilitate the controlled distribution of water throughout the launch pad, the manifold systems were added. With multiple pipes serving to feed water into the Mega Steel Pancake, the system orchestrates the intricate choreography of water pressure, a crucial element in the flame deflector's ability to protect the launch pad. In addition to OLM SpaceX, also focuses on the tank farm area. First, according to Elon Musk, 
SpaceX replaced damaged tank farm tanks at the pad that were already set to be swapped out with vacuum jacketed versions. We're going with more of the vacuum jacketed kind of giant hot dog looking tanks as opposed to the, <laughs> the, the so the, yeah, it, va vacuum jacketed giant hot dog tanks. So the, the, those are in the best shape and those are what we want anyway. So some of the tanks will be, will be uh, yeah, probably removing and replacing uh, with the hot dog tanks. Second, there was also the addition of new subcoolers and new pumps on the methane and oxygen side of the main orbital tank farm. These additional features, once fully installed, will help reduce future countdown times and speed up the Starship's refueling schedule. Although not seriously affected by the explosion at the launch pad, SpaceX also wanted to make minor changes to the hardware of the launch tower before the second flight. After the accident on April 20, they moved the Quick Disconnect Arm, or QD, for short out of the orbital launch tower. To date, the QD arm has been attached to the launch tower at a higher position compared to its original design. Indeed, the addition of a hot staging modification to the booster requires SpaceX to extend the QD arm upwards to keep up with the ship's altitude. Hope that it will work well on the next flight. Not that enough in September. Sections of the external staircase were lifted onto the launch tower. More notably, it looks to have gone higher than the QD arm now. Stage zero is now fully operational. That was proven by the fact that SpaceX conducted the first full pressure test of the water deluge system on July 28 and two static fire tests on August 6 and 25 respectively for the OLM and Booster 9, as well as related parts. All showed positive results as the new upgrades worked smoothly and overcame the shortcomings of Starship's first launch. Starship has not yet been licensed to fly and SpaceX's team continues to work with the FAA to apply for a launch license. Hopefully, everything will go well so the public can soon enjoy the performance of the new upgrades of both Stage Zero and Starship. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.